97, Sacramento Police, the unit 99. Are you in the clear? Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, Sergeant Guthrie, 909. In service and on the air. This is Sergeant Bruce Guthrie of Unit 99 at Headquarters, Police Department, City of Sacramento, California. My detail is to ride in Unit 99, our tape recorder equipped radio car, and to respond whenever the dispatcher transmits a signal to one of our other units on duty somewhere in the city. At the scene, we make the recordings which we provide for this program. Now, to tell you more about Unit 99, here's our chief, James D. Hicks, Sacramento Police. When Unit 99 takes off on the dispatcher's radio signal, everything which happens is real. What you hear, happened. This is the standing order to Sergeant Guthrie, the officer in charge of Unit 99. Get it on the spot while it's going on. And as you listen, this is what Guthrie does. Now to Unit 99 and Sergeant Bruce Guthrie on duty. Have a disturbance call, 415, we'll cover it. The unit is just coming around the corner, pulled up in front of the address. Let's follow them into the house and see what it is. Hi, Leo, how are you? Hello. 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 Sir, this is my wife. I come home tonight and I left her. I got a note from my wife that she's leaving me. Now, she got a right to leave me with my boy. She Just certainly has. To walk right out. She certainly has. Fine, okay. Now, I'm glad of that. Now, what reason can she leave me? She's no, free white and over 21. And, and for cruelty. Well, that's something you'd have to take up in court. Now, that's, well, that's I have a court. lawyer, and he says he has a lawyer, and he's going to take my boy away from me and prove me an unfit mother and all this stuff. And I didn't even want to talk to him. I told her not even let him in because I knew how he'd act. He'd scream at Oh, mother, what would you think your husband would think if you just fly come home? Well, I bought the I don't kebab want dinner. to talk to you anymore. Well, if I got a right, the, the, she let me in. I didn't break in or nothing. Names and everything. Well, I didn't I call her nothing. It's you a, did, it's, too. Yeah. All right, I call her nothing. All right. I call her all kind of names. Uh, we'll say I call her all kind of names, hon. I call her all names. What did I call her? Tell me what I called her. What kind of names? All right. I call her all kind of names. She let me in. I, this is between my wife and I. I come home. I find a note. What would you do? She has left. I'm sorry, Mom. You press charges against me then. I can't help that. That's fine. Now, if I, is my wife got a right to leave the home with the baby? Now, without without separation of court or anything, that's all I want to know. She does. I already told you that. She has got a right Absolutely. to leave with the baby. She can leave any time she wants. All right. Now, otherwise, could I leave any time I want? Any time you want. Sergeant, we've been married for, uh, we've been back together now. We've separated for four months. We've been back together for one whole year and bed. How much long have we been back together? That don't concern right now. It does do concern right now. I'll be fine. I don't even want Now, you've got no more right to that baby than I have. Yes, she has. Now, I don't know what the sergeant said. Now... That's your baby, it's my baby. I'm not worrying about, I'm worrying about the baby's sake, hon. I'm not worrying about what I think is right. I know what is right, what I'm supposed to do. Now, whatever the sergeant says, I'm going to do it. But listen, I'll tell you one thing, that whatever comes first, this baby comes first. This fellow was trying to protect us while ago when he's calling me. Protecting what? I never said, me. I told no, you, Mom, you keep your, you slap me here. I told you slap well, he me here. Me. He got right up in my face, as close to my face, and just hollering and screaming out at me. I wanted to slap me. Then, then I have a right to, to a right to strike anyone, ma'am. Well, I'll tell you what. I I'll told you, strike the other one. Strike it now. No, You're so smart. No, he has no right to push anyone around. And he has no right to be in here if you don't want him here. Well, I tried However, my best to get him to get out because he told me that he wasn't, says, I, I says, there won't be no trouble, Mom. I promise you there won't. Now, that's what he said, and y'all, and uh, yes, he, right. heard, he heard you, and she did too. Well, are you going to prefer any charges against him tonight? Well, I certainly am. I'm on a, I'm on a, a for disturbing the peace because he's, he promised me faithfully there wouldn't be any trouble. Uh, did he actually put his hands on you? Yeah, yeah. he sure did. He, he pushed me. Well, you have a right to have him put in jail on before disturbing the peace, and you can sign a citizen's arrest 
which you would have to do, and you would have to appear in court against him. Well, I, Are you I, willing to do that? I certainly am, because I'm telling you something. I have put up with this guy, and what I mean to tell you, see, he's half gambling and gambling and gambling. I'll go out and talk with the officers and have one of them come in and have you sign a citizen's arrest, and they will take care of the man for you. They are. Well, the only thing that's going to happen is you will get into I'll leave, Doc. I didn't mean to have any trouble. You'll get into a disturbance over here at the mother's home, and then what'll happen is she'll have you thrown in. Well, I mean, I'll just act that out. You come over here uh, to her place and No, I want to talk to her. Why? Why? Have because you thrown in for Tennessee, the, the uh, mother-in-law would like to talk to you inside. Okay. Oh. Uh, well, there's nothing I can say, so I don't think it's I come home and find the military and she's gone. Like I said, we've had a little trouble before. But then if she would sit down and talk to us, she hasn't said anything. I, when I left tonight, I said, I'm going to bowling alley. I'm going to have a, a beer. Maybe I bowl a couple of things, and that's fine. Now, as far as the drink goes, that don't bother me at all. She want to go out dancing. I don't want that stuff. I got the boy in there to remember, and that's one thing that I'm living for right now. Otherwise, I wouldn't put up with this for nine years. Like you said, that's not here nor there. That's in the court. Well, the thing is, you can't... I don't want to take it to court. You can't settle anything by coming over well, here I and just thought raising maybe, a rumpus. You'd... Well, I didn't raise no rumpus. Well, I can't say anything. What are you saying? I'll just have to talk to the judge. Because the woman can, and she probably will, put you in jail if you come over here. You'd be better off waiting till tomorrow. And well, I've, I've figured tomorrow. that, yeah. Why? Well, but this has happened a couple, to three, four times before. You still have a problem tomorrow? Why? You'd probably be better off settling it in court rather than well, having uh, words the way you Rather than do that and put the boy through all this, I would rather not, rather not do it. I think I've got a little better judgment than that. Well, he's somebody that you have to consider. Right? Well, There's that's no the only thing I'm thinking that. about right now. I'm thinking the boy, the kid is young, and he's only for not even four years old yet. And what she's worrying about, she's been out with a fellow here at the telephone company. She's been going out. I've been back with, she's been out with that fellow five different times since we've been back a year and six months. And I haven't said a word. I've even forgiven her for those things. Her mother went and bought her $120 worth of clothes that I couldn't afford. How can I buy those things? And go in and ask her mother there. What are you going to do with this fellow? Uh, we're going to advise him to go home and uh, maybe he can solve the problem better tomorrow by phone or in a personal interview with his wife. As far as a nice concern, if he comes back, we'll have to book him. What right is a wife that that has got a boy, we'll say four years old, and she's got material things that she's thinking about, and she's not thinking about things that 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 really matter? Why she is doing these kind of things? She's done this three or four different times now. She's and why can't you see that everything is the happiness is ahead of everything i don't understand it that's something that neither you nor i can understand well the good lord might uh the good lord might figure it all out i don't know leo is the mother-in-law going to press charges uh, not tonight no she uh she's going to go down and see the city prosecutor monday and if possible get a peace bond against the boy to keep him away from the property this case is commonplace the type which police officers encounter frequently all the ingredients of domestic discord were present a gambling husband, a wife clinging to a doting mother, and a child who will probably be the principal sufferer. The man was released with a warning to create no further disturbance. Unit 99. 99, go ahead. 924, the counter, 99. 940, the watch captain. 924, roger. Check 99, KMA 907. That was a call to meet Captain Ledoux at the station. We better roll on that one. Captain Ledoux, did you put out a call for you in 99? I did. Uh, the boys, uh, there was a stick-up uh, lady and her daughter who was in one of the banks out there getting some change, and she came out, as I understand it, got in her car, and as she started to drive away, this young fella stuck them up and took the money at quite a large sum and the uh, officer's uh, surgeon and H. Uh, Taylor responded to the call and they were fortunate in getting the culprit and we have in the building now the victim, her daughter and the culprit. Uh, oh, here comes the officers now. This officer Taylor and surgeon, you're the ones that picked up this man on the stick up? That's right, Sergeant. Where is he now? He's upstairs on the third floor. Would you mind giving us some of the details on this? 
Well, we received a call to investigate a possible 211 in uh, Grand Theft Auto at the uh, Fruit Ridge shopping area. And we responded to the victim and uh, her child was there and there was several witnesses that told us that the uh, man had ran south in the Fruit Ridge shopping area and jumped a fence. And so, uh, Officer Sergio and myself, we uh, drove around the vicinity looking for him. And we had various reports from different citizens around there seeing him, but none could put a finger on him right away. So we went back and we were interrogating the victim when uh, a citizen ran up to us and said he saw the man walking down by the Cardinal store in the Fruit Ridge shopping area. Uh, Officer Sergeant and myself, we then got in the car and uh, proceeded that way and we spotted him walking alongside the, the bank and we stopped and placed him under arrest. What had he done with the money? Uh, he uh, placed it uh, uh, just about a block away f or in the, when he was running from the scene. He threw it in a bush. He told us later that he had to get rid of the money. And he took us back and showed us exactly where the money was. It was hidden in some bushes? Yes. How far from the street? Oh, it's... The backyard is, oh, maybe 20 feet from the sidewalk. Was the gun there also? No, he didn't have a gun. He simulated a gun in his wife's bathing suit with his hand. He wrapped his wife's bathing suit around his hand and simulated a gun. I see. Uh, is the victim here in the station now? Yes, she's right over there. <laughs> we have the victim of this hold up here and her daughter, Officer Surgeon, is going to see if he can get her story. Uh, Ma'am, when the, when the man came into the car, what did he exactly did you do? Well, I um, I don't know. I guess I just kind of jumped. I just knew what it was, and and so I jumped out and opened the door, and then I remembered the youngster, and so I screamed. Well, I kept a screaming, and then I I don't know. I ran around and and uh, and I said jump. And, and I think she that's didn't... what helped us was the screaming because uh, he got into the car, her car and started it off, but it, her screaming frustrated him so much he couldn't get it started, and he's an auto mechanic. Well, how did he actually get into the car? What did he say? What he got in he... like a passenger would get in, I heard the door click, and I looked around, and there he was. It looked like he was had the gun on me, and so I went to jump, but he got in like a passenger would get in, but the people around said they thought it was just someone that knew me and, and was getting into the car, and I started to scream, and of course, one lady recognized me, knew what it was, and she put her pickup right in front of my car so he couldn't get out. But, what did he say then? Well, he, uh, I don't, I don't know anything he said other than I ran around and tried to get her and, and she was under the wheel of the car so if he started the car he would have run over and I picked her up and I started to run. I lost my shoes and started to run. He yelling to call the police but it seemed like no one would call so I ran into Heath there and the lady in there knows me and so she, uh, and got the police. And I thought he had left in the car, but he didn't. Huh? Where was the money when... Uh, it was in the car, in right the there. Uh, yeah, I was either on the seat or right down, you know, right alongside of me. Did he grab the money first? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. He, all he was worried, getting in the car like he had the gun on me, so I don't know. You remember seeing the bathing suit? I remember, yeah, seeing that covered up and pointing right at me. <laughs> I remember that. You <laughs> I actually, what it was. I you actually thought it was a gun, right? Oh, yes. And then after, when I got out and I was trying to get her away, he kind of leaned out like pointing it. So I just figured I'd get shot, too. But <laughs> <laughs> You can positively identify the man that we brought in. No, I was too excited. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I, you know, I knew that he had a crew haircut, and I, and I knew, but I was too excited. I... I wouldn't identify anyone. Did you see him run away from the car? Oh, no. I was no. calling the police. I <laughs> he, he admitted uh, yeah. committing the act. Uh, everybody else saw him. So, I mean, Several witnesses there identified. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you recognize him, uh, young lady? No, I, did, I hadn't seen him before. I mean, did you recognize him when we brought him back to the car? Yes. That's the man that was the one who jumped in your car? Yes. Remember when he was sitting in the back of the squad car? Was that the same man that jumped in the car? Yes. He didn't say nothing to you, did he? He said, get over or something. Move, move over. Move over. Then what'd you do? I, I just sat there and wondered what he meant. And I... Did you try to get out of the car? 
Yeah. Yeah, I tried to get out of the car, but when he tried to uh, mo uh, go uh, drive the car away, the well, light tried to jump out. He I didn't push you or force you? He didn't. I just tried to get out. And when you tried to get out of the car, you fell down, is yeah, that right? Yeah, fell and she was under the wheel. How much money was involved? Uh, well, it was 2500 just lacked $9, I think, of being 2500 is the exact count. Mm -hmm. What was the money to be used for? Our store, for change, we didn't want to cash checks over the weekend. Everybody's getting paid. She, dro she drove away, and uh, I'd say they were approximately 500, 600 feet from the bank. Yeah. And uh, he pulled up alongside of her. And she yeah, stopped. I stopped at the stop sign. He, yeah. he pulled up in the parking lot there, and then he ran, I guess, and jumped in mine yeah, when I stopped. Was uh, parked opposite of yours, yeah. but it was parked in, a, in such a manner that it would be parked recklessly. I mean, he was yeah. jumping out of it when he parked it. Yeah. You uh, are going to make the re report on this, Taylor? That's right, Sergeant. What reports do you make? Well, we make the offense report and the arrest report. We also booked the money, and uh, he had a loaf of bread and a box of dye with him when we arrested him. And we found the bathing suit he used to simulate the gun was in the back seat of her car, and we and we booked uh, that as evidence. The money is evidence, and what he had on him is evidence. I see. The man is upstairs now. He is. He's being fingerprinted and mugged now. Are you going to interrogate him? Yes, Sergeant. Fine, then we'll follow you up there. Officer Taylor and Surgeon have brought the man into the interrogation room on the second floor of the police station. They're going to question him in regard to this caper. Officer Taylor, this is the man? That's right, Sergeant. Uh, you want to tell us now exactly when you got the idea and why you got the idea? Well, you just at the wicket at the bank and seen the woman get the money next to me and you were standing right next to her in the bank? Well, I was in the next wicket. And you saw the teller hand her all the money? Yeah. She went out to get in the car and I followed her and... In your car? And I followed her out of the bank and I jumped in her car. You followed her in your car first, didn't you? Yeah, for one block. And, uh... When you parked your car and jumped into her car, did you say anything to her? No, she just jumped out of the car and started to scream. So I jumped over to try and... No, what are you trying to... When you uh, had your hand wrapped up in the bathing suit, what did you say to her? I just opened the car and I went to get in. I went to say, give me your money. And she opened the door and started to scream. Jumped out. So I jumped over. There was a little girl there and I moved over the girl to try and move the car. And I couldn't. It was... I don't know. I drive a standard shift and that's an automatic. And I just got muddled up. You were going to try and use her car. Yeah, but I couldn't move it. I don't know why. So I yeah. jumped out and I grabbed the first thing. I was looking for a bathing suit. I couldn't find it. I grabbed the first thing and I run. If I had been the bathing suit, I would have taken it. Did you know where you were running to? No, I didn't know. Just out of there, that's all. Everybody, cars seemed to be coming in all over. Did you see the people uh, take out after you? Yeah, I've seen some people take out after me, yeah. And when did you get the idea of throwing the money into that bush there? I got scared. What? What did you do with the money? I just threw it in the bush and hopped over a fence. I want to get out of there and get in my car and get home. Did you know where you threw it? Well, I had an idea where it was, somewhere around there. Uh -huh. Did you think of coming back and getting it later on? Did I you go away? To, I probably would have. I didn't know. How were you going to explain it to your wife when you brought the money home? I wouldn't have taken it home. What would you have done with it? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. What do I, what do I need it for? I got a nice home and everything. I don't need that money no more than you need it. You, maybe you need it more than I need I don't know. Now when you uh, climb, uh, climb over the fence back of the shopping area, did you, uh, where did you go from there? Did you go in the store? I just, yes, I went and wife told me to get some loaf of bread and some dye for going to a party tomorrow night. Do you remember when we pressed you under arrest? Do you remember the spot in front of the bank? Bank pardon? Remember yeah. when you, we placed you under arrest? Where were you going then when we caught you? I was going to get in my car. Well, what would you have did if there's all the people around here when you got there? Would you still got in your car? I guess. Well, let's go back to the very beginning of this thing, uh, Surgeon. Let's lead him along through it, starting from the time he left home, how, why he went into the bank and so forth. 
I went down to the bank to... Well, you, you left home, you say? Yes, and I Where went, did you go then? I went to a bank to... I wrote out a, a check and I signed my name wrong, Ill regular signature, so I took the check back to get another one because they cost you 10 cents a check on a checking account. And I was at the wicket when the woman was getting the money. To the right of her or to the left of her? Do you remember that? I was at the left of her. Left of her? you never seen the lady before? Yeah, absolutely. I've just seen all that money there. How much money was there, do you know? All it seemed was a pile of money. And what did you say to yourself, do you remember? I don't know, I just said... Did you think you had it happen? Yes and no. I don't know, I just seen it there and I... I wanted that money, I don't know why. I just wanted it. You've seen a bunch of money, you know what? You ever did anything like this before? No. Never been arrested? And then you, after this, after you pulled the caper, you came back to get the bread and the dime. That's right. Were you uh, worried about... I was scared about... I was hiding and I got, I got to go and get my car and go home. Were you worried about what your wife would say? Well, I probably would have went home and talked it over and she would have told me to go and get the money and take it back. I know that. Where would you have went if you got away with the Buick, the car, the lady's car? I don't think I would have went very far, I'm sure. I had to get my car. My car is right there. I realize that, but where, Why did I take it? where you would have went with the viewing? Thank you, fine. Don't you have any idea where you went with the other car? No, I don't. Your main idea was just to get away, is it Just right? to get away. People were closing in. There was people honking horns, and people seemed to be blocking me, and I don't know. Did anybody make any effort to stop you personally? No. Well, apparently he's told us all that he can about the circumstances. You've already taken him up and booked him. What were the specific charges? Uh, Section 211 of the Penal Code. Uh, stick up, armed robbery. That's armed robbery. I didn't have no gun. You simulated the gun, that is the same thing. You, you uh, took money by force of fear. When you threatened him with that bathing suit, they, uh, the woman, she thought there was the a gun on her. The screamed and she was scared. Not only for her life, but for her daughter's life. And you managed to uh, look like a gunner, or else you wouldn't have took the bait and shoot, right? I guess. This may have been the most inept robbery attempt ever staged in this city, and obviously was perpetrated on the spur of the moment. Even if the man had not returned to the scene, the presence of his own car at the spot would have made his apprehension comparatively easy. He was unable to explain his actions, other than the sight of all that money created an impulse he could not resist. This young man may need a psychiatrist as much as he needs an attorney. This is Unit 99. These on-the-scene tape recordings were provided by the Sacramento Police Department and were made on duty by Sergeant Bruce Guthrie in Unit 99. Your host is Chief James B. Hicks of the Sacramento Police Department. Unit 99 was directed by Tony Kester and came to you from Sacramento. Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, 908 coming in, end of tour. Check 99, KMA 907. Unit 99 has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.